Lumos. Knox. See, there is even a little bit of magic in the real world. Fantastic Beast and Where to Find Them, starring Eddie Redmayne, Katherine Watterson, Dan Fogler, Allison Sadol, Colin Farrell, Ezra Miller, directed by David Yates, and the screenplay written by J.K. Rowling. Fantastic Beast takes place in New York City during the roaring 1920s, and 50 to 60 years before Harry Potter was born. It follows the story of Newt Scamander, who is traveling to release a magical creature back into the wild. Events go awry in the city when some of his creatures escape his magical suitcase. At the same time his creatures start running around the city, another dark force or creature is terrorizing the magical and non-magical people of New York City. To say I'm a Harry Potter fan might be a bit of an understatement. You can't see it here, but down on the bookshelf, I've got all of the Harry Potter books, of course, in hardback, but I also have all of the English versions of the same books, which I ordered off of Amazon UK. Plus I have all the digital copies, and I might or might not be trying to get all the audio ones as well. So yeah, I'm a bit of a nut. Simply put, I love the series, and I jumped on the bandwagon when the fourth book was released. Having another movie separate from Harry Potter, but set in the same wizarding world, is simply fantastic. Just the fact that we were escaping back into this magical world was enough to sell me on the movie. My thoughts on the film might be slightly skewed because I love the world that J.K. Rowling created to such a major degree. I really enjoyed Fantastic Beasts and thought it was the perfect mix of fun charm, message, and hints of a darker world which make up most of the Potterverse books and film. The performances for the most part are all great. Eddie Redmayne loses himself into the role of Newt. The only issue I had with his performance is the mumbling he did throughout the film. It was hard to hear what he was saying about the animals and what they could do. This was more than likely a character trait of Newt, but maybe they could have highlighted his quirkiness in another way. I think the other standout of the film is Dan Fogler, who plays the muggle or non-madge as they are called in America. He is the audience for the film, showing the sense of wonderment a person introduced to the magical world would have. His slight comic relief, but sweet sweet and good-natured persona adds a great touch to the film overall. I like Katherine Watterson's character, Tina, who is a disgraced aura trying to get her job back. Something, however, seemed a little off with her performance, but overall it still worked within the framework of the movie. Alison Sadol plays her sister Queenie in the movie and quietly steals the show every time she is on screen. Her ability to mind read and turn situations on their head played into the overall fun nature of Fantastic Beast. On the flip side of the heroes is Colin Farrell's aura detective Graves whose motivation isn't completely understood until the very end of the movie. He keeps interacting with a troubled and abused boy, Credence, played by Ezra Miller. Credence's foster mom beats him and wants to expose the wizarding world. The woman wants to bring wizards and witches into the light to persecute them. Graves wants and needs Credence to find a child for him. We don't find out why until closer to the end of the film. If there is one slight miss for the movie, it is with Farrell's character. The ending of the film helps explain this to a degree, but I would have preferred more motivation for him provided throughout the story. Underlying message of the film, like any good Rowling's, is about not hiding who you truly are and the damage that can cause. I like the slight twist that Rowling's and Yates had in the story, and while I probably should have seen it coming, the setup had me totally fooled. Fantastic Beasts is an overall well put together film, the action is fun, the story engaging, and the message is subtle. It is a fun movie, which also has a ton of heart and love put into it. The ending might have wrapped up a little too neat, but when you have magic, I guess anything is possible. Fantastic Beast is well worth seeing, and worth seeing multiple times in theaters if you're a big Harry Potter fan. If you're just a casual fan, or just want to see a fun film, then it's still worth checking out. What did you think of Fantastic Beast? Like it? Love it? Hate it? Comment and let me know. Like, share, subscribe, and all that fun stuff. Thanks for watching.